today. They said in the past two years, the Supreme Court has ruled that police can swab a suspect's cheek for DNA in order to put it into an unsolved crimes database. They can conduct strip searches of prisoners without reasonable suspicion. And they have said that police need a warrant to attach a GPS device to a suspect's car. And yet, we still see these cases of the Stingray devices that local police uh, stations uh, are using throughout the country. Police departments are using Stingray devices to track people's whereabouts without actually attaching it. See, that's the kind of prevarication around the bush these guys like to do. When the Supreme Court does slap them down and say, you can't attach a GPS device to the suspect's car, they say, well, okay, we've got this new device called Stingray, which we first talked about a couple of years ago here at InfoWars. We're telling people about it. Now we've had several cases where local police departments are exposed. Uh, we just had one this last week. And when they're exposed and criticized for it, they say, well, of course, we couldn't tell anybody about it and we couldn't get a search warrant for it because we signed a non-disclosure agreement with the company that sells this, saying that we would not get search warrants to perform this. You understand that? The non-disclosure agreement with the company that sells it is more important to them than the Constitution. Does that make it clear to you that we're living under a corporate fascist state? Their legal agreements with these military industrial police state surveillance companies and their equipment that they're selling, that takes precedent over their oath to the Constitution, over the supreme law of the land. It means that they're not going to get a search warrant. Well, today, fortunately, the Supreme Court says that they cannot pick up smartphones and search them without a warrant. Now, the case that happened here is this guy was pulled over. He had expired tags. Then they found out that his driver's license was suspended. Then they search his car and they find that he's got a couple of loaded guns. At that point, they arrest him. Then they grab his phone. They start looking at it. They find photos that show that he's part of a gang. Then they find a photo of a car that had been used in a drive-by shooting. And based on that, they charged him with attempted murder in a drive-by gang shooting they sentenced him 15 years to life. And that was the California Supreme Court rejected it. They took it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And today, they unanimously said that cell phones differ in both a quantitative and a qualitative sense from other objects that might be carried on an arrestee's person that can be searched without a warrant. Now, I have a problem with that because this, the Fourth Amendment clearly says that you are secure in your person, your houses, your papers, your effects. Now that's pretty inclusive. And I think that that makes it very clear that they can't go through your wallets, your purses, your notepads, which they say have, have been fair game and are fair game. I don't think those are fair game. When you are secure in your person, in your house, in your papers, in your effects, that's very comprehensive. And just because they don't label every single thing and say electronic cell phone, because they didn't write electronic cell phone in 1789, that doesn't mean that you don't have that protection. They're laying down a principle here. And of course, it, those principles don't change, even though technology does change. And the Fourth Amendment says that the government needs to have a warrant. And listen to what they need to have a warrant for. It needs to be specific specific to the place, to the things, to the people that they're going to search. You have to specifically say, I want to look at this particular device or this purse or whatever to go through that. You don't have the legal authority. The government does not have the legal authority to just stop people on the street and demand like Nazi Germany, give me your identity papers, please. You can't do that. That's a totalitarian police state. That's what we're going to be talking to Paul Joseph Watson about at the bottom of the hour. That's what we're going to be talking to Cheryl Chumley about in the third hour. But that's what we have had. And I have a problem with the fact that they're still carving out exceptions for these other things. If we were secure in our person, places, our homes, we would not be having these kind of no-knock SWAT team raids. Even whether in some cases they've got a search warrant, some cases they don't. And the saddest thing about it, is that we see Supreme Court justices like Scalia say, well, hey, you know, obviously these rights that are in the Bill of Rights are not absolute because if they were, the Fourth Amendment would stop the TSA from searching people at the airport.
Boy, it's that upside down logic. We're going to be talking about that, and we're going to be talking about the police state. Stay with us. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions, silverlungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. Attention all radio listeners, Survival Life is giving away free credit card knives exclusively to our radio listeners here today. Visit MyCreditCardKnife.com to see this covert knife in action and claim yours for free. It's the same knife you've seen in the airline magazines for $29.95, but today it's yours free. Just pay shipping and handling. MyCreditCardKnife.com, MyCreditCardKnife.com. Go now. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my Male Vitality about three days ago, and I must say that was good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic Organic Super Male Vitality Formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality and getting the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products at InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of HB extract. It's extremely effective and it starts working in just days. Visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers. And we've never increased our price in over 10 years. That makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com. A 30-day GMO-free emergency food supply for only $99 at 30dayfoodsupply.com. You can purchase Oregon Trail Foods' one-month supply of high-quality, nutritious, and healthy emergency meals. For less than $100, these vegetarian meals are naturally high in fiber, carbs, and protein, and they're packed with oxygen absorbers in Mylar pouches. They're completely free of any artificial flavors and colorings, have a 20-year shelf life, and take up to 70% less space than number 10 cans. They even offer a gluten free option. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com. Keep prices low by buying directly from the producers in Oregon and then passing the savings to you. Purchase a 30-day 90-serving emergency food supply for only $99 this month and $10 ships your entire order. Visit the website at 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com where they make preparedness affordable. 30dayfoodsupply.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to be joined by Paul Joseph Watson in just a moment. He's going to talk to us about this appalling story that he reported on yesterday it was picked up by Drudge, a woman who was forced to strip naked at gunpoint during a terrifying SWAT raid. Uh, this is uh, Homeland Security coming into her home, and of course, as usual, 
We don't get any explanation as to why they did this. Uh, still, as far as I know, there's no explanation about it, but Paul's going to go over those details with us. Paul, welcome. Hi, David. Good to be back. It's good to have you. This is amazing to me, and of course, as I said in the very first segment, I feel like we've all been essentially stripped naked by Homeland Security. They watch everything we do. Nothing escapes their scrutiny, and we dare not question it or look them in the eye. And of course, they don't give us any explanation. Have they ever given any explanation to this uh, woman or to her, her boyfriend, husband? No, this, this merely came out on YouTube and a, a Tea Party website over the past couple of days. So DHS has said nothing about it so far. All we know about it is what the woman involved in the incident told us. So while it's still up in the air, as he said, the, the details that she described were shocking to say the least. Yeah, tell us some of those details that are in your article. Well, this is basically a couple in Florida. They were the victims of a dawn raid on their home by both police and DHS agents. Um, they basically burst into the house at 6 a.m. The couple were in the shower. They just got out of the shower, so they, they were wrapped in towels. And the DHS agents pointed guns at them and demanded that they disrobe. So you had basically a, a naked woman being forced onto the ground at gunpoint. <laughs> Um, the the woman's boyfriend said that the one of the DHS agents then proceeded to ogle her naked body up and down like, quote, a piece of candy. And after that, they spent two hours trashing their house, said apparently they were looking for electronics and laptops. Now, they did have a warrant. Uh, they claimed they were looking for, for electronics and laptops, but the woman claims that they didn't even remove any electronic material. <laughs> they showed little interest in what was on the computers and the laptops. And basically, it was described as a, a feeding frenzy. She, she described it as, quote, two hours of pure hell. They trashed the house and left again. So, as you said, it, it ties into these fears, which were again brought forward by John W. Whitehead of the Rutherford Institute earlier this week, which is that the DHS itself is turning into this kind of national police force, this standing army that is increasingly becoming outside of the law. It's being used for numerous different purposes, spying on protesters, uh, conducting raids, as we see in this case. So it's part of this growing fear that the Department of Homeland Security is turning into this feared federal national police force with uh, no regard for the Constitution whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's an article from The Guardian today talking about another egregious case where they basically did a SWAT team raid threw a flashbang grenade into the crib of an 18-year-old. And uh, if he survives, he's going to be severely impaired for life. And uh, they're sounding, the Guardian is now sounding like uh, the new American. It's amazing. You know, new, uh, 30 years ago, the John Birch Society warning us about the federalization of the police. Well, because they're, they're targeting both left and right. I mean, we've seen the DHS, they post their FPS agents outside Tea Party protests. We know that they were also involved in cracking down on the Occupy movement. They were caught spying on environmental protesters via the Federal Protective Service. So they're targeting both left and right uh, of the political spectrum, which is why, as he said, now the Guardian's reporting on it, people are starting to realize that this, this crackdown is on all of us, no matter our political persuasion. And I think the wider point is the fact that we know they're treating the American people more and more as the domestic enemy, that's why they're buying these armored vehicles, these Bearcat vehicles, not even buying them, being given them yes. by the Department of Defense. They, do. they don't, they just have to pay for the cost to go and pick them up. So they're becoming more militarized. Uh, they're buying equipment that was used on insurgents in Afghanistan and Iraq. So again, we ask the question, who are the new insurgents? And as the DHS itself and other federal authorities have said, you know, it's veterans, it's Tea Party people, it's anyone that's basically political. Well, we've now seen we see scenarios more, and more of these raids. Exactly, we've seen training scenarios coming out over and over and over again from the military, from uh, uh, training institutions where uh, where they train people in the army about counterinsurgency. And of course, the villains are typically going to be Tea Party people, and that's what we saw when we covered the uh, uh, the counterinsurgency in Virginia.
You know, this is an organization, Asymmetric Warfare, that's always worked on counterinsurgency, but now they're training for America, and we know which Americans they're training for. We're going to be right back with Paul Joseph Watson, and that was an 18-month-old, not an 18-year-old that was in the crib, just to clarify that. I, I misspoke earlier. We're on the march.